okay so welcome all for this session on materials so this is the third lecture that you have under module 5 i see there are only eight nine people so i i believe uh, more people will join in as we are also going to have your ic right okay am i audible rushikesh unmute ko yes okay fine so maybe we will start All right so i hope this is visible to you right we had stopped at this point of time correct so we had stopped at the earlier slide so i guess we had finished wood and grp so today we were supposed to start carbon fiber yes okay so okay we are on time we are going to start the next part because at again 12:15 we need to take a stop or a pause in between so that you all can attempt uh, your isc right okay so isc2 has been uploaded on moodle at 12:15 we are going to take a pause and people can go and attempt the isc right so i see more people joining in around 24 participants now okay so we'll continue with the next material which you have in this particular module so the next material that we are going to study is carbon fiber and to start with carbon fiber are epoxy composites and most recently you find that uh, a lot of uh, racing cars or even some passenger cars also have uh, carbon fiber components which are used on them so one of the advantages of this is that they are strong and light in weight so as compared to metallic components or parts the weight of these carbon fibers is quite less so obviously you are going to get more performance and more mileage from the vehicle and it can be used at the front and rear spoilers as well as on side skirts okay so again the strength is because of materials which are used inside this carbon fiber so it's generally carbon in the form of graphite or kevlar or even glass fibers so if you are aware about this you might also know that kevlar is a material through or uh, using which even uh, body suits or let us say bullet protection suits are also made so most of the uh, people in the armed forces or even let us say police they might have these kevlar uh, jackets or suits right so again the importance or let us say advantage is that these composite structures they have got a high strength to low weight or strength to weight ratio in case of these composites is very good right so again epoxy composites they have also been the first choice in formula 1 racing cars or formula 1 car industries and even other types of race cars so if you are following formula 1 racing or even let us say you are enthusiastic about some other race cars you will also find that most of these are using uh, particularly carbon fibers okay so any doubts about this you can ask me in the chat or maybe you can raise your hand so in between slides also if you have doubt you can ask me yeah so indrajit is raising a point that some brands which use these fibers or let us say these fibers are uh, provided by these brands i guess fine right. so the next type of material which is again quite common is a fiber glass so these are again glass fiber composites 
and they are most commonly used again in sports cars or formula 1 cars because they are lighter than steel and aluminum which were generally used in the past uh, history or let us say from the inception of formula 1 racing one of the advantages again is that for these fiber glass composites or glass fiber composites you can shape and uh, make the component as per as your requirement and because there is no metal involved they are totally rust proof so they won't have any uh, damage of the material happening because of the material getting in contact with moisture or even rain so even in rainy conditions or there is a lot of moisture in the atmosphere they won't be affecting or rusting the component and again more important factor is that they are cheap to be produced in small quantities so one of the basic requirements of formula 1 cars is that they don't require it in high or huge quantities because they only have one or two uh, models which are going to be running on the track and maybe another two which are going to be stocked up in case of any accidents so they are uh, sort of vehicles which are made to order kind of vehicles in the sense the formula 1 racing teams uh, they manufacture their own vehicles again to protect uh, the confidentiality of the data or design they generally don't source out these manufacturing and that is the reason why they might as well go for manufacturing processes which might be uh, let us say time consuming or even initial investment required is more but if they are producing it in small quantities or lesser number of components being produced and if it is being cheap as compared to uh, what can be done on a production scale model they might definitely use that so that's the reason why you find composites are the most preferable materials or a material of choice to all of these formula 1 uh, racing cars that you see right so typical composite fiberglass component they generally include either the interior or exterior panels then you have got some dashboard components you can even make seats so if you all attended yesterday's session uh, i guess uh, it was told that even seats can be made up of composites right then you got spoilers so sills this is something or these are the components that you always uh, if you follow f1 racing you might easily identify them on a f1 car right any any manufacturer's car then you have got light pods and surrounds which can be made up using carbon sorry uh, composites then car corner caps and profiles so what are the different properties of fiber glass which make them suitable for the applications that we are talking about first one it is lightweight so with a fuel economy which is going to be quite uh, let us say essential in any car that is manufactured lightweight materials are very commonly used if if they satisfy the conditions which a metallic component or part at the same location is going to be performing so companies generally go for a lightweight metal in that case okay so commercial leisure and family vehicles buyer list of requirements these days is that the fuel economy of your vehicle has to be very good right so every ounce or every gram of weight that is saved to the use of lighter materials is again a step to beat the competition that you have so if there are say 2 3 or 10 oems competing in the same segment let us say small cars so it is very important that whatever offerings that you are giving to the consumer whatever product that you are offering to the consumer is uh, the best that you have on road right so that's the reason why grp again is used so light strong and infinitely adaptive so that means the shape of grp can be as per your requirement then there is another property which is flexibility so flexibility of style and use so in in that matter you have got fiberglass which can be molded something that we already discussed into any shape okay and you can create it in any color or finish so it's not only the shape in which you can mold it you also have an option to directly manufacture fiberglass in a color of your choice so you add some more chemicals during manufacturing so instead of a transparent uh, type of sheet that you have you might have uh, let us say a colored sheet okay so that is again one of the reasons why fiberglass is quite uh, good to be used and then you can also have finish that you want 
so it can be either a glass finish glossy finish or a rough finish or matte finish that you know of right and then this can be replicated with the extreme accuracy of manufacturing so then hence it is a perfect material for use in a sector which is focused on aesthetic aspects so because automobiles uh, generally are going to consider aesthetics very highly in manufacturing because they want to again make sure that the consumers are uh, impressed by the design right so you have got a good product from or you can manufacture a good product and you can assure that there is consistency of quality whenever you are using fiber glass as a material uh, inside your vehicle right next is uh, durability so the ultraviolet stabilized material that is fiber glass is quite durable and you can prevent discoloration so that means uh, in long term use for this particular type of uh, material you will find that discoloration won't happen okay so one of the advantages that you have apart from this you also have some other uh, advantages that it is fire retardant that means in case of a fire it uh, satisfies the norms which have been set uh, to make sure that they are not going to burn and harm the passengers who are inside they are again retardant to rust and rot that might happen because of moisture and they are also deterioration free so all these properties are important as you consider them as a metal sorry as a, as a material inside your vehicle because it is going to be a long term uh, use or a product which is going to be used for maybe 10 15 or even 20 years in some cases so you want your materials inside the vehicle to be good enough to last such long durations right so next is uh, shape memory alloys uh, a particular metal or type of alloy which has been developed in recent past it is not something which has been used for a long time so these shape memory alloys uh, they have a peculiar property i i believe you might have studied this in materials or uh, in your second year so what what is the uh, property of these alloys is that when uh, you raise the temperature of these alloys they have a property or ability to recover the shape that they had so that is uh, saying it's like saying that the material has a memory to regain the shape in which it was produced at a particular temperature so in case the shape memory alloys they drop down in the sense the ambient temperature drop downs to some some temperature and then if you want to use a heater or something to heat these alloys to the original temperature at which it was formed you will have a condition in that the alloys are going to retain or the component that you have manufactured using shape memory alloys they are going to retain the earlier shape that they had right so again increasing temperature it can result in shape recovery even under high loads which are applied and again this is going to help the shape memory alloys to absorb and dissipate mechanical energy by undergoing these changes in shape okay so if there are cyclic loadings generally in vehicles obviously because uh, there are going to be cyclic loadings you might find that these applications are quite suitable right again unique characteristics of sms they have made them popular for sensing and actuation type of applications impact absorption so in case of a crash you have got impacts or uh, again you have got vibration damping which is required so again to improve or enhance the nvh properties of your vehicle you need to have uh, vibration damping also inside the vehicle or automobile so they are going to help you in that also right but apart from these good properties or characteristics shape memory alloys also exhibit low frequency response and higher actuation frequencies okay so shape memory alloys which are magnetic shape memory alloys have been recently again investigated or developed okay and again suggested for use in the central locking system that you have so they can be used in central locking system trunk locks or even fuel tank cap locks so these are the applications of shape memory alloys that you have 
in the automobile industry. So the next component is body in white, but uh, I am going to suggest that we take a pause here for some time. Again, because we is that uh, while controlling the vibration in your vehicle body components, what you can do is that you first do a modal analysis. So in the design process itself, if you find out what are the different modes, okay, and using those modes, you can change the stiffness of various components that you have inside your vehicle body. And what happens because of that is that the overall NVH performance of your vehicle body is going to be drastically improved. So if you avoid having the natural frequency of the entire vehicle body in a range at which the vehicle is going to operate. So let us say you have got a passenger car, which is going to be operating in speeds of, let us say, from maybe zero kilometers per hour to, I will say 250 kilometers per hour, or maybe less, even less sometimes. The maximum speed that uh, a regular passenger car has is about 180 kilometers per hour. Okay. So whatever frequencies that you have in this operating speed, if at all possible, you might try and make sure that the first natural frequency that you're going to get. Okay. For the entire vehicle body is going to be above these frequencies. Okay. So this is something that you uh, discussed in one of the previous sessions. So, so like I told you that, uh, the bike that I have uh, specifically uh, a Thunderbird. So what happens is that at 70 kilometers per hour, I feel uh, there are quite a large amount of uh, uh, amplitudes of vibrations or uh, there is resonance which is occurring. So again, uh, even for your own bikes, you might uh, be feeling this particular type of thing. So the best possible uh, scenario there or something that you can avoid is that you avoid driving at those speeds. So if you are at, let us say, driving at around 65 kilometers per hour, uh, you accelerate the vehicle such that you don't drive continuously for 70 kilometers per hour and you go to the higher speed. So you avoid uh, the resonance that is occurring and hence the vibrations that you are going to feel as a driver. So obviously if you're going to be driving at, or if I am going to be driving at 70 kilometers per hour, I'm going to feel uh, a very high amplitude of vibrations and that is going to affect my comfort. And if it's a long uh, duration, or let us say a long distance ride, uh, overall at the end of the ride, I'm going to be fatigued. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why you'll find that such a care is now being uh, given to NVH and even there are a lot of uh, people now or a lot of openings now in OEMs specifically for NVH. So uh, generally uh, nowadays people or consumers are very concerned about what is the NVH performance. So earlier it was only used to be uh, how is the aesthetics then how is the comfort and how is the mileage? Okay, so these three or four uh, categories were something that consumers were very aware about. But now as the consumer is also evolved or matured, now uh, the consumer wants the vehicle to be best in terms of everything that it has to offer. Okay, so not only mileage or aesthetics or ergonomics inside the vehicle, but also uh, the NVH properties or let us say um, the other properties which generally were uh, not considered earlier. Okay, so main research areas to control the vibration and uh, NVH uh, characteristics are to control the overall body stiffness. Then you identify the overall body mode. So this is what I was telling you about the natural first natural frequency. So that is what is meant by the overall body mode. And then you try and control the overall body mode. So if possible, you can add some stiffness, or if an, uh, you can maybe add some weight to have better performance of NVH. So there is again a, a dilemma here that if you try and go on reducing the weight of your vehicle body in some of the panels, you might lead to lesser stiffness. Okay. So then lesser stiffness is going to be relating or is going to be uh, leading to a poorer NVH performance. So less stiffness parts, obviously they're going to vibrate quite a lot. Okay. So then again, there are different techniques. You can go for topology or topography optimization. Again, something uh, that we discussed in yesterday's session, or you're also going to learn topology and topography optimization in the next semester. Okay. So there you'll find that by changing the overall shape of any panel, 
or having some bead pattern on your uh, panel you can increase the stiffness of any body panel without increasing the weight okay so for the same weight of your body panel there are ways to increase the stiffness by changing or having topology and topography optimization of your body panel right so then these softwares uh, again or commercial packages again can help you find out what is the best possible shape that you can have right so yeah we'll go ahead again what are the vibration and uh, sound radiation for the body load structures so again controlling the vibration and noise of these local structures they again involve various aspects so first is uh, you control different different panel vibrations that you have or you find out what are the sources of different different sounds or noise that is generally it is known as and you try and make sure that the noise that is being generated there is minimal okay then find out what are the acoustic cavity modes and try and cover up these cavity modes and finally you control what are the different vibrations due to the accessories that you have inside your vehicle body so if at all you can control all these different different things at the end it is going to lead to a, a very better performance with respect to nvh or a very sound vehicle body which is going to be more comfortable for the passengers right so next is so a term which is known as sound packaging i believe uh, we discussed this earlier also but in detail we are going to study now so interior trimming including sound absorption and insulation materials so something i told you earlier by using various types of sound absorption and insulation materials you can have a, a very comfortable passenger cabin so these are installed in the biw and these are not for decoration purposes only but they are also to absorb and insulate noise okay so like i told you earlier the difference between noise and sound is that sound is something that is is pleasing to your ears okay and noise is something which is going to be harsh so noise is something that you don't want okay and sound is okay in in, in terms like if there is some sound you can maybe be comfortable by hearing those sounds but if there is noise it is definitely something that you don't want or something that is going to irritate you okay so conventionally non metallic materials structures and techniques which were associated with acoustic treatment uh, they were referred to as sound package okay so to make sure that uh, you have less amount of noise into the passenger cabin uh, they used to use non metallic materials okay or even if you see if you go to any auditorium okay or or let us say a theater to to watch movies there you will find that specifically at different different locations they will have sound absorbing materials which are put up okay so those materials are generally to make sure that the high amount of uh, noise or sound that you have inside auditoriums or theaters are absorbed by those materials and they avoid any echo okay so because uh, you want the best uh, possible experience for the consumer or customers who have bought tickets and come inside that's the reason why a lot of money is spent on making sure that acoustically the theater or auditorium is very good or comfortable okay next is uh, the body panels and glass so these can be again sound insulation structures so obviously glass is going to be something which is going to be let us say a barrier between the outside uh, ambient environment that you have and the inside car cabin so not only is it going to allow the passengers or uh, the driver to look outside so visibility apart from that it is going to make sure that there is no temperature or heat loss happening okay so in case you are going to be switching on your air conditioning so the glass is thick enough to make sure that Uh, there is no heat gradient that is being formed at the inside surface of the glass and outside surface of the glass right so sound insulation material is very rarely used alone uh, you need to combine a sound insulation material with a sound absorptive or absorption material so you don't want to only insulate the sound or noise but in some cases you also have to absorb the noise okay so example you have got a dash insulator which is a combination of sound insulation and sound absorb absorption or absorptive materials okay so even in in case of uh, the engine compartment as well as the passenger compartment where you have got a firewall so even there there are a lot of sound insulating materials which are put up 
so not only the fire situation that you want to avoid but also because the engine is going to be emitting or generating a lot of noise or sound you want to have some sound insulation at that particular location okay so these two uh, figures that you see they show the pathway that whatever noise and vibration is being created because of the power plant or the engine how it is transmitted or transferred from the location of generation to the passengers okay so so i'm going to let us say take a small pause here for you to see and understand these two figures so if you see the first figure that you have on the left so you have seen there is a transfer process of sound and vibration okay so in this particular case because of the structure of your vehicle it passes through the structural members and through the steering wheel it is going to pass to the hands okay through the pedals that you have accelerator and braking pedal or the clutch via the leg of or the interface or surface which is contacting your foot so through foot or through your feet the driver's feet they are going to be transferred to the body okay so sensitivity of the driver again is going to be affecting how he uh, perceives the noise and vibration inside the vehicle another way of uh, transfer process is acoustic sensitivity so directly because of the noise of let us say the engine through air you will have that it is going to be transmitted to the ear of the driver or even the passengers so that's the reason why i told you earlier that at this particular location okay there is going to be some sound insulation provided apart from firewall which is going to reduce this noise so p source is the source of your uh, noise or vibration that is the engine power plant and p ear is what you perceive or what the driver is uh, okay anybody wants to leave uh, he or she is free to leave so i see mr raj mane is very hungry so i i suggest that you leave uh, the lecture and you go and have your lunch okay uh, now it is not compulsory for you to sit here i i believe you have marked your attendance so you are free to uh, leave the meeting and go and have your lunch okay fine so this is how it is going to be perceived by the occupant the last one is wind and wind noise and control so as uh, the vehicle is going to reach speeds above 120 km per hour you will find that wind noise is going to become prominent and what then happens over here is that you need to mask this wind noise that you have to make sure that comfortable uh, passengers are going to be sitting inside uh, the vehicle okay so again Uh, there are different different ways uh, that you can do that or research that can be carried out in this particular condition so research area for making sure or minimizing wind noise is classification and mechanism of wind noise so you study how the wind noise is being created or generated and how it is being transferred from the exterior to the interior of the vehicle then influence and control of body styling so how the body styling is going to affect wind noise so obviously if your body styling is not correct or if it is not good enough the resistance that is being offered to wind is going to generate or create lot of wind noise okay then uh, something known as dynamic ceiling so this can be also used to control the wind noise and finally evaluation testing and analysis of wind noise so these are the research areas which can be studied further for reducing wind noise door closing and sound quality so like i discussed earlier you can have uh, specific points which are having high dynamic stiffness on the striker end okay so whenever let us say the door is being closed if you have these uh, locations which are uh, fitted with various components like maybe say rubber component 
so it can lead to or it can make sure that whatever the noise that you're going to have if you're going to close the door is going to be soothing okay so you can see that when a customer closes a door he wants to hear a single impact clear vigorous and solid sound so if it is going to be a ring down type of sound so sort of like what you the sound that you have when you hit a fork a tuning fork so i guess in your class 12th you might have done some experience on tuning forks so once you hit a tuning fork the sound is going to be there for a very long time so it's the, that is known as a ring down type of sound so this particular sound is going to be considered as poor okay or perceived as poor quality sound right so that's how uh, you can improve uh, the door closing sound quality and the last part like we discussed snr so the last slide for today's presentation squeak and rattle or snr refers to abnormal and irregular sounds which are generated so whenever a vehicle is going to move there can be conditions when you are going to have a squeak or rattle okay so if you see generally squeak noise is something that you are going to get from engine or maybe from road and then uh, if at all you have got brakes which have worn out a lot so there is a, a particular noise which is known as brake squeak okay so again uh, those noises can be avoided if you are continuously uh, monitoring and let us say servicing your vehicle so maybe if the brakes are not performing well uh, you might hear the hear this brake squeak and th this is a very irritating sound okay so this generally happens both in case of two wheelers and four wheelers so there is a lot of research which is carried out to make sure that brake squeak is avoided okay so specifically there are companies like uh, uh, bosch braking systems or let us say uh, norbrace may or or even in uh, itzel karanji there is another company which which supplies brakes to lot of uh, high end oems or uh, let us say uh, luxury vehicles so all these different different braking companies they invest a lot to make sure that the brakes that they are providing they are not going to have a squeak okay so brake squeak is going to uh, affect brembo yeah so ritwik is telling me the name of that particular company you got many many companies brembo nissin which are into the braking system so they are only manufacturing brakes and then you don't want that squeak because uh, the consumer is going to be very irritated okay so research scope for squeak and rattle it includes studying mechanism of snr squeak and rattle identifying the locations from where snr or squeak and rattle is being generated and then you control the squeak and rattle okay so that's how uh, you can maybe go ahead and maybe find out what area that you want to work on so we are going to stop here like i told you today and if there are any questions you may ask me either in the chat or you might as well uh, ask me by raising your hand okay so both both the things are fine 